Welcome to our latest St. Jay's Monthly Supplement. I trust that you've had a great Christmas and can I wish you a very happy new year. It's always great to have you with us. If you happen to be new or visiting us for the very first time, can I extend a special warm welcome to you. This month we'll be remembering all our various Christmas events and Nick Blythe and Meg Tucker will be giving us an update on open access youth work in Peasdown. In December, St John's Church in Peasdown held its Christingal service where we had over a hundred people attend. The service this year was a treasure hunt to find the clues for each part of the Christingal, ending in finding a candle which represents Jesus being the light of the world. It was a special moment as we lit our Christingles and enjoyed singing around the campfire. A Christingle prayer. Like ribbons wrapped around the world, Jesus makes God's love shine bright, and every sweet thing that God made is saved from darkness by that light. As candle, ribbon, orange, fruit come together merge and mingle. God desires to make us one. That's the meaning of Christingle. Also, at St. Julian's Church in Wellow, they held a similar Christingle service too. And this is what happens at the Little One's Christmas party. And this is what happened at our after school club party.
Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the far side of the wilderness. There, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in flames of fire from within a bush. Moses saw that though the bush was on fire, it didn't burn up. So Moses thought, I'll go over and see this strange sight, why the bush doesn't burn up. When the Lord saw he'd gone over to look, God called to him from within the bush, Moses, Moses. And Moses said, here I am. Do not come any closer, God said. Take off your sandals for the place where you're standing is holy ground. Then he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. At this, Moses hid his face because he was afraid to look at God. The Lord said, I've seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I've heard them crying out and I'm concerned about their suffering. So I've come down to rescue them from the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them out of that land into a good and spacious land. So now go, I'm sending you to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? And God said, I will be with you. Moses said to God, suppose I go to the Israelites and say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they ask me, what is his name? Then what shall I tell them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. This is what you're to say to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. I am who I am, Yahweh. God's name, too holy to be spoken or written down in full. I am who I am. I will be what I will be. Holy, unchanging, too much for the human mind to understand. A mysterious and enigmatic answer to the question of God's name. I am who I am. Moses is on holy ground and unable to look directly at the awesome presence of God. I am who I am, God who attracts Moses' attention and calls his name. An ordinary day herding the flock has become extraordinary. This extraordinary, dangerous and impossible call that takes no account of Moses' abilities or desires. This powerful God who isn't calling Moses to cosy personal fulfilment or inviting him down an easy path, but who does promise to be with him as he returns to Egypt, the place from which he fled. God, who has entered into, disrupted and redefined Moses's ordinary life. God, who has entered into, disrupted and redefined our world in the person of Jesus. Jesus, who gives us a glimpse of what God is really like. I am who I am. Jesus, who says, I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. I am the way, the truth and the life. Jesus, who frees us from slavery to all that's wrong in ourselves and calls us to free others from oppression. 
Did Moses ever regret turning aside to look at that burning bush, yearning for a simpler, more comfortable life? Or was he in awe of that moment and all that God called him into? How is God attracting our attention in our ordinary lives, calling us by name to dare to be part of the plans of I am who I am, who is beyond our human understanding? How can we notice the burning bushes, sometimes seemingly insignificant, sometimes startlingly obvious, as we walk into the uncertainties of 2022 in the certainty that God is with us. Earth's crammed with heaven and every common bush afire with God. But only he who sees takes off his shoes. The rest sit round it and pluck blackberries. Hey everyone, my name is Nick. For those of you that don't know, I'm the youth worker and youth worker in Peasdown. Um, and so we have launched our open access youth work sessions um, and been doing a, a various number of other bits of stuff around. Um, who are you? Hi, I'm Meg. I am a swim trainee um, doing a degree with swim um, and the Hive and Barty for Christ is my placement. Woo! Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we're, we're super excited to give you guys a little update on what we've been up to in the last few weeks, months, um, since I got in post. Um, we have launched our open access youth work and so over the last two, three weeks we've had young people coming in to access uh, the service here at the Hive and we've probably seen about 50 different young people between the ages of 11 and 16. Um, and so, yeah, it's been a really interesting sort of varied, um, you know, highs and lows um, kind of few weeks. Uh, but it's great just to get started and kind of providing space for the young people. Um, in Bath, there's a citywide youth alpha, um, which has kicked off as well in the last few weeks that we've gone and supported and uh, been a part of that. And actually, amazingly, one young person has already made a commitment to follow Jesus halfway through. And they're not even at the end of the, the process yet. So that's super exciting. And that, that is some great stuff going on. Meg, what have you been up to? What kind of things have you been enjoying? Um, in the new year, we are hoping to launch a mentoring programme, which I've been planning for since last year. Um, and it would be really great if any of you guys wanted to get involved. If you knew any young people who could do with mentoring or if you wanted to volunteer as a mentor, that would be great. Um, get in touch with either of us and we can chat to you about that. Um, but I'm really excited for the prospect of some of the young people just coming to know Jesus, even if it's only one of them. Yeah. Um, even if only one of them is just like, I think I might, might maybe believe in God. That's, that's great, that's exciting. That means we've done what we're here to do. Um, Awesome. Love that. Yeah, so we've got open access youth work, we've got youth alpha, we've got mentoring and we've got some schools work coming up, um, some sessions where we're going to be getting into the schools, Christmas assemblies, all that kind of wonderful stuff. So we are just laying the foundations at the moment, um, but we're definitely excited moving forward to see what the new year holds um, and we'll give you an update the other side of Christmas. Um, yeah, have a great few weeks and we'll see you guys soon. Thank you for being with us. It's always a delight to see you. I trust you enjoyed our latest programme and can I please continue to encourage you to send material in for our next programme, which will be aired on Sunday the 6th of February.